and you're playing, you're betting, and you're playing against the dealer pretty much. And I see this man, he's got like already four cards that are in front of him. And he's saying like, hit me. And then the, the, the dealer gives him another card. And it's, uh, it's still a small card. It might have been a three or a four that was dealt. And then, then he says, hit me again. And he says it again. So when I saw this image, I, I immediately thought that you're taking a big chance. You're taking a big risk because you feel like the gamble is worth it. it it's, it's almost like calling somebody else's bluff, okay? Um, so when I translate that message into the cards, um, some of the th things that I'm picking up here is um, there's definitely communication between you and another person. And I feel like the communication has to be very, very, very well thought out, and the communication has to be very tact. So it's almost like you're sitting there trying to communicate with another person and I, I almost feel like this element you guys are naturally very cautious to begin with and I, I literally see like somebody typing an email or texting and spending a lot of time making sure that the wording is just perfect. Spending a lot of time making sure that, you know, you everything is spelled out correctly, everything is grammatically correct, that there are correct punctuations, there are correct uh, numbers and figures and, and things like that. So there is something that you're doing very meticulously, that you're, you're doing with the utmost care because somebody else is going to review it or somebody else is going to read it. So I, I feel almost like this uh, element about, you know, wanting to communicate with somebody, um, measuring your words, weighing out the word choice, weighing out what you're going to say, and, and being extra careful about how you come across and how the other person is going to receive your message. It's almost like wondering, is this the, the right uh, tone that I should use? Is this the right way in which I should communicate? Am I getting my point across? So you're really reassessing this, this piece of communication that you're sending off to somebody. And um, what I feel here, we do have, let me see. We do have two people that you're dealing heavily with for this week. I have here the King of Swords. So this is an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And then I have the Queen of Cups. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So these two figures will be very, very prominent in your life for, for this week at least. And what I feel is um, there is somebody that is, um, they come across almost like they're always analyzing things. They're, they're, they might tend to overanalyze. And they might, you know, they're, they're very intelligent, but I, I almost feel like they, they're a little bit more on the pessimistic end, okay? There's sort of like, oh, it's not going to work out. We should have a plan B. So in a way, they're very cautious as well, but I feel like they err a little bit more on the, op uh, the pessimistic end. And so they don't really do anything rushing right in. They're not impulsive. They take their time whenever they're confronted with a problem, whenever they're confronted with a crossroads, or whenever they communicate. So I feel like they're very measured, very methodical, and ex extremely, extremely like analytical. And they could read something and analyze it to death. Or they could like look at one situation and come up with like multiple scenarios where things can potentially play out or where things can potentially go right or where things can potentially go wrong. So I feel like this is almost like a strategist. It's somebody that has a lot of insights, a lot of foresight, and also they, they plan for every possible scenario. And so when you're dealing with this person, I feel almost like they're giving you a lot of different scenarios for you to mull over, for you to analyze. And, and, and I feel like in a way, dealing with them can be very refreshing for you because I feel like a lot of the times you guys do, you know, get um, really stuck 
um, it's, it's almost like that tunnel vision. You know, you want to have things a certain way, and especially when you have an emotional pull towards something, it's almost like you trust your intuition so much that you're like, nothing can go wrong. My intuition is really pulling me in this direction. So I feel like that's where I'm meant to go. Okay, and this is you going for something. This is the Knight of Cups, and I feel like this is more your energy. Going passionately towards something, seeing something that you, you like, it triggers your senses. And you're just like, that's it. My intuition, my heart is telling me to go this way. There's nothing here that indicates otherwise, so I'm going to go for it. But I feel like this person is telling you, yeah, but if you do this, there are all these other things that you have to consider. And I almost feel like you deal with things that are in front of you. Whereas this person deals with things almost from like a bird's um, eye view. They're, they're looking at the totality of a situation. And they're like, well, you take that route, you know, further down the line, there's going to be some blockages. Whereas if you take this route, it's a little bit more circuitous. It, um, it, it's not as straightforward, but you can sur circumvent this potential pitfall. So you're dealing with somebody who is like that. And that's why your, your communication has to be very, very methodical and very measured. Um, I feel for some of you, this is almost like a, um, a person that you're trying to please, okay? So when I say that, I feel like, you know, you care about this person. You're emotionally, you, you, there's some type of a, an emotional investment here. Because honestly, when you don't care about somebody, you don't care how they, you don't care about their opinions, and you don't care how they perceive you. You just don't care. But I feel like you do care. And that's why you do things in such a measured way. Because you want to please this person. And you want to... It, it, it's, it's almost like you respect them. And so their opinions matters a lot to you. Their advice, their counsel, their opinions, whatever they say, it matters a lot to you. So that's what I'm seeing here. And... Um, if it's communication you're waiting on, it's going to take some time. If it's communication that you're waiting on from this person, I feel like it has to take some time. And I'm almost feeling so the senses, okay, the, the senses. It, it's like someone who's, you know, a, this might be a separate message altogether. Um, there is somebody that is really pulling or really appealing to your senses. So they could be, you know, very aesthetically pleasing to look at, okay? So, like, you, you might be attracted to them, but I feel like it's a lot more than that. There's something about them that's very unique, and I feel almost like there's something about them that is very nurturing, that is very pure and innocent, and this is what I'm, I'm drawn to, this Two of Cups. It's somebody that is not afraid to be vulnerable. It's somebody who's, you know, she's completely naked and she's okay with it. And um, it's almost somebody who's like very, it's like a naturalist, somebody who enjoys the simple things in life. They're not bogged down with status, money, power, prestige. They don't really care about those things. They have more of a heartfelt energy with them. They like simplicity. They like minimalism. They just... Um, Whatever the normal, average person values, this person isn't like that. And so in a way, they, they're really unique. They're quite independent, and they're quite fearless. And I feel like that's why you're really drawn to this person. Um, I almost feel like this person, their, their attention is kind of focused elsewhere. That's what it feels like to me. It's like you're charging straight forward to this connection. And I feel almost like their attention is elsewhere. So if this is like somebody who is an ex, if this is somebody who is brand new in the picture, that, that is really striking your fancy or you find yourself very attracted to them, I feel like it's going to take... A big grand gesture for for this person to be to fall in love you know it, it, it seems like this is not somebody that falls in and out of love easily it's not somebody that's like that 
And so it takes somebody pretty spectacular. It takes something spectacular for to, to really capture this person. And uh, every time I see birds or I see imagery with wings, it's somebody who might be flighty or somebody who might be fickle or somebody who um, who is kind of afraid of commitment, okay? And so going back to that image where uh, you're at the, you know, the blackjack table and you're just like, hit me, and you're calling the, the dealer's bluff, it seems like that to you, to, to me, where you're just like, um, you you might be calling somebody else's bluff, or you might be, um, you might feel like somebody is is being false, where they're they're pretending to be a certain way, but deep down they are a different way, and they might not even be aware of that that they're sending out mixed messages, that they're sending out mixed signals, but I feel like. You guys can really, you know, you have really keen intuition and you can kind of splice at the truth. And you can, within like five minutes of meeting somebody, really um, analyze them, even without meaning to, you know. You can kind of like sum them up and, and you would be very accurate with your assessment as well. But I just see this situation where it's, it's almost like, you might have it in your emotions that they are a specific way. And once you're set, your emotions are set, it's really hard for you to see outside of that framework. And this is true of all fixed signs, okay? Like um, the air signs, so like uh, the, the Aquarius, the Leos, or even the, the Taurus. But with the air signs, once they form their opinions about a certain topic, about a certain stance, about a, a specific person, they don't really change, okay? And then I feel like that's the same way with Taurus. Once they're fixed on a course of action, they don't deviate. And then I feel like, you know, once again, you're at that blackjack table. It seems like you're accumulating a lot of cards and you're taking a huge gamble. And it's almost like, you know, any time now, it's going to be a bust. It's going to exceed that 21 mark but you're willing to, to bet, you're willing to go forward. So it's almost like the, the, the reality of the situation is you kind of need to stop while you're ahead, but then I feel almost like something is telling you to, to keep going. And if this is a work situation, I would say be very, very careful about, you know, trying to do something on your own. Um, having somebody to, to kind of step in, especially that strategist that's telling you, wait a minute, you've already like got four or five cards. Any time now, it's going to be a bust. So why don't you quit while you're ahead or let me assist you. Let me give you a different strategy so that you can do it the right way. Okay. So um, a lot of the times, too, with uh, Scorpios, I, I just feel like, you know, you guys do have uh, a lot of pride. And um, I, I feel like, you know, you're, you're generally very independent and very stoic. You, you like to be able to do things on your own. You value self-sufficiency and you do value independence as well. You like to, you know, test your capabilities and you pride yourself on being able to be kind of like that expert in your field. And... It's really hard for you to ask for help. It's very, very, I, I rarely, rarely see um, fixed signs asking for help, okay? And this is not about, you know, throwing yourself a pity party or this is not about, you know, blindly walking down a path where it, it's not going to pan out well for you. This is more about being smart, having a strategy. And if we feel like we're in a situation where our blood pressure is right, there's a lot of like creative problem solving. And I feel like, you know, you, you guys like that. You guys like to solve puzzles. You guys like to figure, like, you know, take things apart and try to figure out how the mechanics work, how things fit together. So I almost feel like there's a lot of these creative problem solving using using tools or using things for one purpose and then um, um, it's almost like transferring that 
thing to a different to to use to a different purpose and it works so there's a lot of creative problem solving there's a lot of like um talking things through with another person and the person can provide you with a lot of insights okay so i feel like it's a very collaborative week and um it's it's really not indicating to me that you should keep information to yourself or you should try to 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 test your luck and do it on your own because like i said you're getting a lot of love and a lot of support and you're being looked at very very favorably so anybody will be more than willing to come to your rescue to help you to assist you or even to sit down and you know pick your brain so it's really important to you know try not to do it on your own okay um, I don't see a, like a, a very busy energy, but I, I see this sort of like merry-go-around um, when it comes to communication more than anything. When it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to communication, it's it's just this revolving door is what I'm, I'm feeling, this revolving door. And, you know, merry-go-arounds, revolving door, all indicate cycles all indicates like a situation that is very monotonous that we want to get off like you, you just want it to end you just want the ride to end so that you can get off and then like try a different ride so there might be a situation where things are a little bit monotonous where things are a little bit dry where things are a little bit uh, stale and you might not feel like you your heart is in it anymore and then there's definitely another connection here I feel that's really pulling you in a different direction okay um but i just feel like i just feel like you have to be a lot quicker when you act that's what it seems like to me um what i have here and these are two major arcana cards so let me just talk about them this is the justice and this is the chariot so both of these are major arcana cards and what it's saying to this meant to me be it shouldn't be so hard okay i shouldn't have to try so hard to pull things forward on my own because i definitely see there's a lot of resistance here with this um chariot card and if you're dealing with a cancer even I feel like this is a very, very caring person, but for whatever reason, there's lack of momentum, lack of progress, or lack of movement in the right direction with this person, okay? So this could be um, business, work, colleague, uh, relationship, as well as love relationship. There's lack of consensus. There's lack of, like, common ideologies. Um, the traditional Rider weight deck depicts the chariot as two people that are very, very different from each other, and they're trying to move in the same direction. And it's strange because this deck is not showing me uh, the two, the horses with two different colors. It's showing the same color. And it shows me as well, you potentially could be dealing with another water sign. But for whatever reason, your, your interests, your goals, your, your, com your um, life path, or the things that you're trying to pursue might not be in alignment with one another. All right, 